Hi and welcome to another question from the best of cat series. This is a rather confusing question if you do not know how to pick your numbers. So, what I would suggest is you have a look at the question, try out a solution on your own and then have a look at the solution that will follow. If you like our content and want to experience the IMS pedagogy, you can join the IMS zero fee prep programs that will give you access to concept videos, sectionals, full length tests and more for free. You may click on the i button or on the link in the description box below to access the same. Happy learning. Now if you look at this question, this question is rather straightforward. There are three consecutive positive integers and this consecutive is going to play a key role when we go ahead with the solution. The product of three consecutive positive integers is 15,600. You have to find what is going to be the sum of the squares of these integers. Now, the values are all pretty large in the options and they are not exactly very good looking values, so to say. So, you are in for a nice calculation ride when it comes to this particular question. But if you have a good sense of numbers, you should be able to crack this question in the next step itself. Because what you have to understand is whenever we are multiplying three consecutive integers, what happens in that case? Let us say that the three consecutive integers are n minus 1, n and n plus 1, let us say. Now, if you are multiplying these three terms, what are you going to get as the product? You are going to get n into n minus 1 into n plus 1 and just writing it for the sake of simplicity. Now, if I actually multiply these terms, what am I going to get? n into n square minus 1, n minus 1 into n plus 1 is n square minus 1, which in turn is going to give you n cube minus n. But this n cube minus n has been told to us to be 15,600. Now, I need something in the form of n cube minus n and this is where your instincts will take over. A lot of people who are extremely good candidates will immediately figure out that n has to be 25. How do these people figure it out? That is basically what I am going to explain next. So, if you look at n cube minus n, it is obvious that n cube is going to be a large number and n is going to be a smaller number because if you look at even the first few cubes, you will see that say 5 cube is 125, 6 cube is 216. 7 cube is 343. As you progress, you will see that the cubes tend to become larger compared to the number that they are that is being cubed in the first place. So, I know that n is going to be a small number, n cube is going to be a huge number and that is why I know that 15600 is going to be very close to n cube or n cube is going to be very close to 15600. Now, what is a number whose cube is going to be very close to 15600? That is the question. And for those of you who know this nice number called 15625, will know that I am talking about n equals 25. If you are not able to figure that out, you can even start thinking about ranges that we have. So, let us say I am talking about 15600 being close to a cube. Now, another thing that should be obvious is that 20 cube is going to be 8000, 30 cube is going to be 27000. 15,600 is somewhere in between 8,000 and 27,000. So, I know that my answer has to be in the 20s for n. Now, we need two zeros at the end. How can we get two zeros at the end if we are multiplying three consecutive positive integers between 20 and 30? The only way to do that is if your product has a 25 in it. Right? Only if your product has a 25 in it, will you be able to manufacture a 0, 0 at the end of it. So, what we do in this case, we basically say that n equals 25. Why do we do that? Because 25 cube is close to 15,600 and we also know that for the product to be ending in two zeros, we need to have a 25 as a part of the product. If you are still confused, what you can do is you can take pairs as 23, 24, 25 and figure out that 15600 is not divisible by 23. 24, 25, 26, that is basically our answer. 25, 26, 27, again because you are doing 25, 26, 27, the number has to be a multiple of 9, 15600 is not a multiple of 9, so 27 will not feature. And that will tell you that the numbers that we are looking at are going to be 24, 25 and 26. Now, what is the sum of squares of these integers? Very easy. Square of 24 is 576, square of 25 is 625, square of 26 is 676. If you add the 3, you are going to get the answer. So, 6 plus 5 
is going to be 11 plus 6 is going to be 17. 7 plus 1 is 8 plus 2, 10 plus 7, again 17. 1 plus 5, 6 plus 6, 12 plus 6, 18 will give us 1877 as our answer. So, option 4 is going to be the correct answer here. What you can also do in this particular case is that you can divide 15,600 into its constituent elements and then try to see if you are able to get 3 consecutive integers. 156, if you are aware of numbers, is going to be 12 into 13 into 100 and then by simple manipulation, 12 and 13 are separated by 1, 24 and 26 are separated by 2. If you pull out a 4 from 100, you are going to be left with a 25. If whatever I have said at the end makes sense to you, then I am sure you will be able to crack this question within a glance. Now, there is another question that is of a similar nature that has been attached at the end of this video for you to try out on your own. Do give us your answers in the comment section below. Happy learning.